Minions have spawned. What's up ladies and gents, it's Kuma, and I uh, just want to preface this video by uh, telling you guys, you know, thank you for watching uh, watching my videos and coming to check out this, uh, this tutorial for getting out of bronze. And, um, you know, it's Christmas Day, so I just wanted to say uh, Merry Christmas to you guys out there, um, guys and girls, and also Happy Holidays. I hope you guys learned something from this video, and um, enjoy. hope your family's doing well, and uh, have a great holiday. What's up ladies and gents, I'm Akuma, and welcome to an episode of League of Legends and uh, Climbing Bronze. So currently I am uh, in Bronze 1. Um, when the season first started, I went 5 for 5 in my placements and I actually got Bronze 2. And um, you know, I actually wanted to make a video to share with you guys how um, I'm trying to climb out of bronze and uh, as an 80 carry. But yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys how um, how I'm climbing out of bronze as 80 carry. Um, I think this season climbing out as climbing the ladder as 80 carry is probably one of the most difficult things to do. Uh, you are super dependent on your support. Like, your support is the lane. If your support is bad, you're going to have a bad time laning. Um, if you have a good support, it's going to make your job extremely easy. So, you know, as an AD carry, um, definitely not the best role to try to climb out with. I don't know how that minded me. It's kind of ridiculous. But... You know, if you are stubborn like I am and you want to be a great AD carry, you know, you're going to have to learn how to carry as um, AD carry and get yourself out of your placements, or get yourself out of your division. <coughs> so in this lane, um, we're playing as Tristana and Leona. So normally you want to you wanna get good team compositions um, and try to predict like what kind of team composition or lane composition that your opponents are trying to go for as AD carrying support but since it's bronze you know you can't really you, there's not a lot of um, flexibility there you know people play whatever they want in bronze and silver etc so oh boy I'm about to die here gotta play real careful so you know, let's just jump straight in, into this and like talk about the game rather than uh, you know preparations and and uh, pre-game stuff. So I mean, right now we start off pretty bad. Um, you know, I took way too much damage focusing Lux instead of focusing on Ash, but you know that's sort of a calculated risk that I took. Uh, Ash has uh, Warlords for her masteries, I believe. Let's see. Uh, is there a way to check? Huh. I guess not. Well, uh, if you check in the in the champion select screen or the champion preparation screen. Oh god, I can't believe I missed that. You you can you can check there at the masteries just before you get into the into the game. And um, because she has Warlords, she can just heal back from any damage that I might dish out at her. So, you know, I made the conscious decision to focus on the Lux, since um, she is a carry support. And so she'll she'll take a lot of damage, and if I can push her back, she won't be dealing damage to me all the time. And zoning me out of uh, CS. So that's the conscious decision I made to try to make sure that we have even footing between the two bot lanes. Normally, because of Tristana's um, E passive, she pushes very strongly. She's a very strong pusher, and uh, you know, she'll naturally be quite aggressive, but with two carries, with an A carry and a Lux carry um, in bot lane, it makes it 
a little bit more difficult to CS because Lux can zone you out. And uh, unfortunately, that just is what makes this a tough, a tough lane to play in. All right, Leona decides to jump in on the Ash, which is good. Fine. Rise coming in. We try to get this kill on her. Can't quite get the Ash, so. Probably best that we pull back, and even if we don't get the kill, at least we blew two of her summoners. We blew her flash and we blew her heal. So now she's very exposed. Luckily, my team is quite good, and uh, my jungler actually knows when to gank, and my mid laner knows when to roam, which is great. Perfect. Um, normally in bronze, you won't get that, so I got a little lucky in this game for, with that. Okay. It's the incoming Lee Sin. You know he's going to Q you, so um, best thing you can do is try to flash it or jump it, depending on you know uh, how, what the timing looks like. Thankfully, I kind of, I kind of, I didn't know that Lee Sin was coming, but I had um, the idea that it's possible that he's coming after me right now, especially after all that attention was given to bot lane just then. So I was, that way I was able to use my use my skill, my rocket jump, um, to get out instead of using my flash. Nine times out of ten you want to flash out, but I was pretty confident in myself, so I decided to use my, my skill instead and keep the flash for something a little bit more dangerous. Let's see, how's the CS looking right now? So right now I'm practically doubling Ash's CS. That's really good. And so their bot lane decided for some reason to roam mid lane and try to kill Ryze. Luckily for us, they didn't actually kill Ryze. He actually was able to get away, and because of that, I was able to get the tower, the bot lane tower, and also first blood tower. Um, so, that's a huge net positive. Unfortunately, Ryze died here for free. Um, we only got the Lux. This fight is not going so well. That's really unfortunate. Now, they, while the team was able to... While their team, the opponent team, was able to kill my entire team, basically in a 4v4, or it was actually a 4v5. Um, uh, the, good, the great thing about Tristana is that you're able to split push. I mean, look at, look at this damage. While they were killing off four of my teammates, I was able to get not only the first tower, the first blood tower, I was also able to deal a ton of damage to the middle tower in the bot lane. Look at that, it's almost dead already. So that's one of the great things of Tristana and like why I chose Tristana to carry myself out of bronze as AD carry. So let's see, decided to buy recurve bow on my second back so on the first back, you always want to try to get BF Sword, which I was able to. And then on the second back, I got myself plenty of gold from the towers and from the CS that I was able to buy Recurve Bow, Dagger, and Boots. And what I'm trying to build towards is an Infinity Edge and Renan's Hurricane. So I get the BF Sword because it gives a ton of attack damage, and that scales up until the mid game. So you you continue to do a lot of damage per auto attack up until like 20 minutes into the game. 
So for 20 minutes of the game, you don't have to buy any attack damage items. So that allows this BS sword allows me to focus mainly on attack speed and um, getting Renan's hurricane so that I'm able to push towers more quickly and um, you know maybe even like reach the inhibitor in 20 minutes. Right after, so in terms of like the build, right after I get uh, Renan's Hurricane, then I work towards Infinity Edge and Static Shiv. And those are your core items. Um, in terms of boots, I go Berserker. You know, more attack speed, more push power. That's the way I like it. So, right here, right now, what I'm thinking is okay, I know that Darius is top lane, and I saw that these three guys are mid lane. And I know Cassidy is dead. Right. So right now I'm like holding tab to check on everything. Um, seeing who's alive who's and where they're at. And um, that way I can sort of figure out, okay, when can I push? So now is a great time to push because I know where everybody is. Um, and because of that, I decided to push this bot lane. And the reason why I didn't finish off this tower by myself and I'll let the minions do it is because that way the tower will actually kill off as many minions as it can and so in this way you're denying the enemy team gold and you're also increasing your lead that's how that's how you sort of snowball games is you you get free advantages that have no negatives Right now, I'm in a pretty bad spot, so... I gotta push her away, and unfortunately, my team got blown up by Lux. Oh god, I hate Lux. Oh my god. <sighs> you like fight her in the jungle, and she'll bind two of your, two of your characters, two of your, your allies, and then she'll just blow up both of them. And they're just taken out of the fight. It's so annoying. She's ridiculously strong right now. Thank god that Ash missed. <laughs> god. That Rise was gonna be a dead man. Uh oh. Ooh, we almost killed her. Holy shit. That Rise damage. Alright, so I decided to go mid, hold the tower. Um. That way we can take as little damage to our tower as possible. Alright, so I head back and I buy boots and I also buy Renan's Hurricane. <clears throat> so the reason why I decided to get the Zerker Greaves before I get, instead of buying um, Static Shiv. Oh, that was a good teleport by Cassidy. But the reason why I decided to buy the Zerker Greaves instead of Static Shiv first is because. A, tier 2 boots give you more movement speed, and B, I believe that Berserker Greaves give you the same amount of attack speed as Static Shiv does. Red team's turret has been destroyed. So, there's just, I already have plenty of pushing power with um, Tristana's passive, Tristana's E passive, and as well as uh, Renan's Hurricane. So, getting boots is just a smarter decision because that way I'm able to keep the same amount of pushing power but I also get plenty of movement speed to escape when I do my split pushes. So right now, right here, I'm just sort of sitting and watching the map. I'm trying to figure out, okay, where is everybody? Right? So I know Darius is top lane. Um, I don't know that he's backing, but I do know he's top lane. So he won't be stopping me. And now I see that there's three people I just saw Three people? Actually, I also saw um, Lee Sin, I believe. So I saw four people in mid lane, and I know Darius is always going to go top lane because that's what top laners do. So I decided to push and wait and see if anybody comes and collects this this um, minion wave. Right? I see nobody's moving. I know that Lee Sin's fighting, and these three are holding the tower, and I don't know where Darius is, but he's definitely not here. So I decided to push up go for the inhibitor tower 
And now I know that somebody's coming, um, thanks to a ping by one of my teammates, and um, also just by watching the minimap, honestly. Like, having map awareness is so incredibly important. So right here, right now, I just don't want to get binded. So that's why I'm hiding behind these minions. And at the same time, I'm able to deal damage to the tower, proc my E explosive, and also deal damage to Lux. So now, here in the mid lane, the fight has sort of broken up, and now I know that, you know, they can come and collapse on me, so now I'm gonna run. <coughs> okay. Let's see what I got. So, I have Renan's Hurricane completed. So I have two, I now have two attack speed items. The Berserker Greaves and the Renan's Hurricane. So now I'm just gonna, because I already have the attack speed, and I've already done a ton of damage to their inhibitor tower, um, I'm gonna go with attack damage so I can continue scaling my damage throughout the entire game and um, that way I'm able to participate in team fights and win as well. So right here I decided to go top because I noticed that you know outer mid tower is dead. All of bot towers are dead so all we have now is top lane. So right now I'm just focusing on getting the objectives. And here I can see Lee Sin. Oh, damn. So here I can see Lee Sin, thankfully, because it's warded here. And I'm able to predict when he's going to come in. So I know he's going to ward hop, and that's why I decide to run instead of just fight. Because the more I run, the more time it gives for Malphite to peel him off of me. So in that case, sometimes running is better than fighting. And at that point, like, I don't want him to kick me towards Darius, because Darius would just destroy me if he gets too close. So, that's why here, I decide to just run away and kite the uh, Lee Sin. So, didn't get any gold, so I don't think I bought anything. Yeah. I just sort of bought a Biscuit of Rejuvenation. Actually, I think at that point, is this mine or no? Oh, it just died. Never mind. But I think at um, at this time I should have just sold the biscuit for um, vision. So as you can see from that um, encounter, that little skirmish. Another great thing about Tristana is that she's able to kite for herself. She's able to peel for herself. You know, she has uh, a jump, and she has her ultimate, which blows people back. So, as long as you can sort of predict when somebody's going to try to do something, try to go in on you, you're able to, to peel for yourself. So you don't have to rely on your teammates to peel for you. She's like, her kit is the perfect solo AD carry. Look at the way she takes towers, that's ridiculous. That's so strong. Like, if you have the right team composition, like, Tristana is by no means the best AD carry in the game. Like, not even close. But with the right team composition, she is incredibly strong. And I think that's why she never gets buffed. Like, she hasn't gotten, she hasn't gotten any attention from patches in, like, years. I think since she got, um... since she got uh, her rework. I actually haven't played the game in a super long time, so I had no idea she got it. She even had a rework. I actually just came back this past year. So that was when I like had to relearn how to use Tristana. Like I don't think she had explosive charges before. She always had a rocket jump and a rapid fire, but I think she they changed her explosive charge thing. And her passive. I don't remember attack range being her passive. <clears throat> it's been a long time, but, you know, I'm back, and I'm here to climb again. Alright, so I take... Oh, that's super unfortunate. That's just really unfortunate.
See, that's one of the bad things about Tristana, is that her moves are all delayed. All of her moves have delay. Um, her jump has a delay. So if you get CC'd while you're jumping, that CC is going to stop you. Um, if you use your explosive charge to deal damage with that explosive charge, you know, it takes time. It's delayed. Uh, it takes time to apply it. And then it takes time to to proc each explosive until it finally explodes. So here I'm seeing on the minimap that my friends here are all grouped up mid lane. Where did that hawk go? What the hell? But anyways, I see that my teammates are all bunched up here and I see that their team is all bunched up, so I'm going to decide to push here. So I'm going to continue to put pressure on this bot lane and threaten that I'm going to take their tower and I'm going to take their inhibitor. So right here, they kind of like are skirmishing in the, in the jungle right now and um, just buying time for me. And the longer that these guys continue to fight my team, the faster the faster I can take this and the more time I'm given to take it. So right here, I think I'm about to take the inhibitor. So right now they could get Baron if um, they wanted to. It's a uh, 3v5 at the jungle right now. But I'm taking this tower and now I'm about to take their bottom inhibitor. <coughs> And that's extremely important, that's such a huge advantage. And here I just decide to fight her because I know I can. That was an accidental flash. I totally fat fingered my flash button. <laughs> I did not mean to flash that, I just totally wasted it. Unfortunate. But I was able to get the bottom tower and the bottom inhibitor. And why that's important. So. The reason why that is important, getting these two objectives, is because now it opens up the entire map for us. Because now they have super minions pushing up into their base, threatening to kill their base, which is our main objective here. And if they lose these towers, we can easily take this. So they have to they have to constantly come back and defend this, and that leaves us open to take this dragon, like Ryze is doing right now, who just, I think, soloed a Air Dragon? What? What the fuck? <laughs> Ryze is so busted! He's level 12! Did he really solo that? Jesus. But not only that, does it open up, uh, you know, map for, the, open up the map for us to take Dragon, but it also lets us take Baron very easily. Like right now, you can see this super minion is doing work, and he's gonna push all the way up into their base. So all we have to do is stall. We can either stall, or if they go back to defend, we can take Baron for free, practically. Um, Lee Sin did a great job there focusing on me. He was able to get the Q on me and then one-shot me. Uh, one-shot me out of the game. Good flash. I don't know if that ghost was necessary, but all right, there you go. Like, luckily for me, how much farm does Rise have? He has 120 farm. Well, he has, I think, like the third most farm in the game. Oh no, Malphite has the third. 160, 192. As you can see, I have a ton of CS. 26 minutes, almost 200 CS. That's pretty decent. Um. But Ryze is pretty, pretty strong. He's gotten plenty of kills and plenty of CS. And Malphite's just destroying. So, because of that fight and because of this bot lane pressure, we actually even took their base tower. Holy shit. We didn't even look at that. Like, the super minions alone did this. Like, took out one of the towers so that we can end the game. 
just by themselves. So here I make a mistake and um, I decide to stay to help save Vi. But then I realize, oh wait, Vi doesn't need saving. Unfortunately. But I was able to get the the kamikaze there against Cassidy, so that's good. Oh, he messed up. Damn. See, this is what this is all from that pressure. Like, guaranteed if that Lee Sin didn't panic, if he wasn't panicking or if he wasn't scared, like if they were winning, he wouldn't have been scared and he wouldn't have messed that up. He would have gotten away scot-free. But just because of this lane pressure, like look at this, I I took these two towers, these two base towers, by pushing in and getting these super minions into their base. And then my team was able to, to stall out the game. Now the weakness towards this strategy is that sometimes you don't have a, a like, sometimes you won't get a team that understands the strategy, like split pushing strategy. My team realizes that if we group 4-1, if they group 4 and I'm the one that splits, they're able to get everything that they want in the future. So it's a very long-term strategy, and not everybody in bronze and silver is going to understand that. So that is the one weakness towards the strategy that I use to climb. Boom! Does Ash want to die? I could kill her if I wanted to. Alright, there you go. That's the game. And that's how... That pretty much sums up how I've been... Uh, you know, carrying myself out of bronze and... Um, why I have over 50% win rate as an AD carry. So... There you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a lot. Um, you know, it was my first time doing something like this, so I'm sorry if some of it doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, feel free to leave me some, some comments, give me some feedback, let me know whether you liked it or not. And, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll keep doing these if, uh, if you guys want. Alright? Alright, thanks for watching, ladies and gents, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.